This is unit number 1.5 in the solar PV installer technicians course. So electric power system is a system of various electrical components interconnected to generate, transfer and utilize electric power. It means the power system that is dealing with generation of electric power, then transmission of electric power, then utilization or the consumption of electric power. So if the system supplies power to homes and industries in a region, okay, means there is a system, a load is there, okay, generation is there. Okay, so that area we call as a grid. This grid is interconnection of these elements for generation, for, trans for transmission or for distribution. So this forms a grid. So grid is divided into following sections. So first one is a centralized grid. Okay, so sorry, centralized generator. So the generators that supply the power. So usually they are very large scale generators and they are located at a distance far away from the a consumption. This consumption we call it as a load. The load is uh, where the power has been consumed. So there is a distance, large distance between generation and consumption in case of centralized generators. So to, to transfer the power from the generating area to the load, we need transmission lines. Because the transmission line, they carry the power from the generating station to the load and this transmission takes place at very high voltage. Okay, next, there are substations where high voltage electricity is consumed, converted into low voltage electricity. Because high voltage that we are not able to utilize at the load centers, the voltage level is low there. So we need to reduce the voltage level. Next, there are distribution lines. So these distribution lines feed the lower voltage electricity to nearby homes and industries. Now, one more thing is addressed here, distributed generation. The distributed generation is located at or near the load. Because so our uh, this is a course of solar PV installer. So the rooftop solar PV installation, all these are a part of distributed generation. The so distributed generation is usually at a low power level and they use a, commonly they use renewable source and very common uh, uh, resource is the solar energy. So distributed generation, these uh, points can be connected to the distribution line of the utility. That means we can supply the electricity, the generated electricity to the grid or it can provide power to a standalone load. Okay, means the load that is not connected to the grid. In that case, solar panel is there. In this case, solar panel, otherwise any type of distributed generation, it is providing power to the load. So the diagram of a grid is shown here. Generation is there. After generation, there is a transmission over long distance. There are transmission towers, then substation that is lowering the voltage, and then there is a load. So load can be domestic, load can be uh, industrial load. So domestic load that is usually very less. Because of smaller electrical power systems are generally found in residential and commercial buildings, small industries and hospitals. So this system usually rely on three phase AC power, which is considered as a standard for transmission and dissemination of large scale power over the world. And it's usually via transmission, transmitting the three phase AC power. Okay, then uh, apart from these, uh, uh, some other type of uh, power systems uh, are used for aircraft or the electric rail system and automobiles. Okay, so they use specialized type of power system. There's something like the, if the, uh, for railways, we are using DC. Okay, so uh, and that is at high voltage, 25 kV. So they are specialized power systems. Then the components of electric power system. So first one is supply, then load, conductors, capacitor and reactors, power electronics, protective devices, and supervisory control and data acquisition. In short, we call it as SCADA system. So we will cover e each of them one by one. So supply. The electric power system may utilize one or more than one sources of power to generate electricity. So DC power is mainly supplied by batteries, by solar cells and fuel cells. 
mean, means these are the sources. The supply these are the sources, and they are generating power. So uh, our solar cell provide DC battery. They also store and give electricity in the form of DC. Now AC power is usually supplied with the help of turbo generator. And this is an AC generator. So there are several techniques used to spin the rotor of the turbine. Because when the rotor is spinning, only then the flux linkage is changing, and due to electromagnetic induction, the EMF is generated. So in case of a hydro power plant, the water flow that is causing the uh, uh, movement of turbine and that is spinning the rotor. In case of a thermal and nuclear power plant, the steam that is produced and that is uh, rotating the turbine and it is uh, spinning the rotor. Okay, also in case of a wind energy system, so the wind turbines are there. They are uh, spinning the rotor of the generator. In case uh, of AC generator, the power generated. We have the phases of the power, like here we said about three phase. So they can be generated by the poles of the generator. Another thing is the frequency. In a grid, the different type of uh, load and uh, generating stations, they are connected. So they are connected at the same frequency. In India, frequency is 50 Hertz. The 60 Hertz frequency is mentioned here, but in India we are not having that is standardized. It is 50. In other countries, like in US, we are having 60 Hertz. So next thing is the load. Power system are capable of supplying that and transferring electricity to load varying from any small household equipment to large industrial machines. Means the load can be very low power consuming or it can be very large scale. And all of these loads, they have their own certain voltage level. Like in case of a domestic load. In the domestic load, we are having uh, approximately 230 volt, 230 or maybe 240 near volt. But in case of industrial load, they are working on three phase. So they are, it will be using uh, near about 415 volts. So that is specific. Industrial load that comes under heavy load. Domestic load that is a very light load. The total quantity of power utilized by the load connected to a power system that is always equal to quantity of power generated by the supply minus quantity of power lost during the transmission. In the power which is lost during the transmission, transmission of power from one place to another over long distance due to the resistance of the transmission lines. It should be minimized. Losses should be minimized. Now coming to the conductors. Conductors are used to carry the power from the power generating station to the load centers. So they can be considered as the transmission system, high voltage, and that is transmission, transmitting huge power. Now next thing, the distribution system. Here they are working on low voltage. So approximately 69 kV. And KV below signal and KV that uh, distribution system deals with it. So it is for the distributed different type of loads, maybe domestic, maybe industrial. So few of the consideration on which the choice of conductor depends. So they are cost maybe because long distance transmission is needed, then costly metal will increase the overall budget. So that is a constant. Next, transmission losses because higher number of losses, the less number of power will be available at the load center. And next is tensile strength of the metal that should be high. So most commonly for long distance transmission, aluminium is a suitable metal. The next is capacitors and reactors. Again, now the loads. Load usually in the industries we say there are large number of motors consuming large, uh, a huge amount of power. So these motors are inductive in nature. And so overall our load that becomes inductive. So as to make our load neither inductive nor capacitive. Okay, capacitance, but capacitance is basically opposite of that of inductance. Like we want our load to work on unity power factor, but it is inductive. So near the inductive load we connect capacitors so that the overall power factor of the system that remains nearly unity or approximately 0 0.8 lagging. So reactors, so in case, uh, well, although the load is uh, inductive, but in case if the load is capacitive, in that case we will be using reactors. 
now coming next to the next uh, topic that is element that is power electronics so power electronics uh, uh, section deals with semiconductor devices and they are working on very high power level so power and electronics so common type of operations or the task performed by the power electronic devices they are rectification rectifier is basically what it is conversion of ac power into dc power so for the system where dc is being transmitted in case of dc transmission voltage level that is also high it is known as hvdc high voltage dc transmission so at the generating station we are generating ac we are converting it uh, or rectifying it into dc then we are transmitting it high voltage to the load sector and there again we are converting it back to ac for that we can use an inverter so th uh, that all is a part of power electronic device rectifier working on high power level inverter working on high power level so hvdc systems or high voltage dc systems are used by many industrial and re residential photovoltaic installations in case of photovoltaic installation we are already getting dc we don't need uh, any type of converter a uh, rectifier you don't need to uh, convert it from the because the output is already dc hvdc that is also dealing with dc the near near the consumption if the load that is working on ac then we need to invert it using an inverter the next component is the protective devices so these devices help to protect the system from any type of uh, damage during power failure so the most common type of uh, a protective device that is a fuse so the amount of uh, the current which is flowing through the fuse wire if it increases a normal level then the wire gets heat and breaks up so the over current that is stopped right there by the fuse so some of the limitation although it has saved the load from over current so load will not be damaged but there are some of the uh, disadvantages that fuse cannot be reset means once the wire is broken we need to replace that wire and if the fault is at some remote site then it is very difficult to re replace the fuse at every uh, time when the, there is a fault uh, another issue is the unavailability of a spare fuse okay then another issue is the fuse allows current flow so it may be hazardous for men so next thing the it is possible to reset the circuit breaker here we have another protective device circuit breaker that is also performing the same task as the fuse is, fuse is performing in the most common type of circuit breaker that is a miniature circuit breaker mcb that is commonly used in our households so whenever there is a condition of over current over fault then this will circuit breaker our mcb that trips down again the situation becomes normal then we switch it on so for applications or power level below 10 kilowatt we use mini circuit breakers more than that we use circuit breakers but they are not sufficient alone to determine or detect the fault and for that purpose for detecting the fault we use a relay relay detects the fault then it initiates the isolation of the faulty section next uh, element is scada system scada stands for supervisory control and data acquisition and so it can perform monitoring we can monitor the system we can also control the system so it can switch on the generators control the generator output switch in switch out system elements for maintenance purpose so following components of scada system they are shown here as computers network communication graphical user interface for providing high level supervisory control means we are having a supervision here we can monitor the system and last is peripheral devices like the programmable logic controllers pid controllers for providing interface to the machinery and the process plant type of power system so it can be considered as uh, categorized as 
residential power system and commercial power system. So residential power system that is uh, very low power level uh, system. You working on less single phase voltage and commercial power system. They deal with high power consumption. So because the consumption there that is much higher as compared with a residential area. Here in the diagram we can see the different uh, components like the generation at the power station, then power transformer, then transmission network. From there, the voltage is stepped down, sent to the distribution system. From there, distribution system, it has distributed low power level, single phase power to the residential consumer, three phase to the industry, heavy industry. That is where most of the power is being consumed in the industrial sector. Residential sector that doesn't consume too much power. So some of the characteristics of residential and commercial power systems. So residential power system. So about residential power system, they receive electricity from the distribution lines having low voltage that run past the dwelling. Operating voltage range between 110 and 260. Most commonly 230 to 240. That is the most probable voltage which we are getting at our households. The majority of residential wiring are single phase. Yes, the single phase wirings. Okay, some appliances. Okay, they consume uh, higher power like the air conditioner. Okay, refrigerators. They can use two phase circuit with up to 240 volts. The residual current devices are installed. These are for the protection. Okay, on the applied circuit as well as on the lighting circuit. So wiring is usually hidden from users within the wall and attic crawl spaces. The protective earth are run in combination with lighting circuit, allowing the metallic lamp holders to be grounded. Why grounding is needed? For protection reasons, the current should not leak. It will go to the ground in case of it is leaking. So the operator that is safe. So in incorporating micro generators means very small scale power generation and that is where our uh, rooftop solar in panel installation comes micro generator next is the commercial power system so high rise buildings and shopping centers they require much larger power than the residential areas so larger commercial installations they require well ordered systems of sub panels which are separated from the main distribution board the wiring uses three phase design. So these are differences in the domestic we saw about single phase here we are seeing three phase. Commercial wiring offers has a higher level of insulation. So that is TTHT thermoplastic high heat resistant nylon coated to protect electric wiring from corrosive glasses and liquids. The so HVAC unit connected to it must be adequately supplied HVAC that is for heating ventilation and air conditioning in the large buildings we install HVAC systems 